Welcome to Ukraine Today. My name is Teres Chechko. Joining me today is Igor Dolhov, Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Defense for European Integration and former head of the Ukrainian mission to NATO. We will talk about the, the Center for Counteracting Hybrid War, which is to be established by NATO in the Ukrainian capital. And the very important topic is the upcoming Warsaw Summit of NATO and what perspectives should Ukraine await for this summit. Mr. Mr. Dohol, thank you for, for joining me today. Hello, uh, thank you for inviting me to uh, talk with uh, your auditorium about uh, the uh, coming summit. And uh, of course, the hybrid war is a small part of the issue because uh, the main, uh, the substance of our cooperation with NATO now is to counter the aggression of the Russian Federation against Ukraine. This aggression has, uh, of course, uh, displayed many features, including uh, the phenomena which uh, we agreed to call hy the hybrid war. And uh, the particular topic you were interested in is uh, uh, the platform. On for, for combating yes. hybrid war. So, of course, it's natural development because it's not in you. Because since the beginning of uh, the aggression, we started to work with NATO how to accommodate our experience into uh, well plans, uh, developments, and uh, mm, tasks of NATO. Uh, because it's it's not a challenge only for Ukraine; it's a challenge for the whole uh, security system, and that is why we have not only to study, but we have to react. So what are the goals and functions of this center for, for countering uh, for counter hybrid war? So the, probably like the outlined features of this uh, initiative. So what are they? Uh, it means, well, of course, it's, it's not a secret nowadays uh, that hybrid war has many, uh, many manifestations unfortunately, starting from propaganda and information campaign up to, uh, uh, well, small groups, well-trained people, green men, who are penetrating territory of other countries and act. That's the whole scope of variety. And uh, we have to, uh, not only to study what, what that, but we have to respond. And we, I mean not only Ukraine, we are doing uh, every day, every night, the same job. But for NATO, Ukrainian experience is a very important, uh, well, subject to study. So what specific assistance will be provided by NATO? I mean, like, will they be experts? Will they be, uh, like, uh, information on how, how to do it? So, what is in specific? Cooperation of Ukraine with NATO is a two-way road because we share our experience. Our experience is uh, paid by uh, lives of our soldiers. We know what that, and we know how to cope with it. So, we, of course, we would welcome any advice in this regard. But, in fact, this is for the first time in the 21st century that one state actor started to employ what we call now the hybrid war. Did NATO specify the deadline for establishing such a platform? We need no deadlines and, and uh, it's not a, a, it's an open-end story and uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the NATO summit would somehow uh, adjust the system or whatever, because we started to work together from the very beginning. It's not something that we are going to create uh, in Warsaw. So you're trying to say that this platform... Of course, of course. It's like and it's a gradual, uh, gradual process? It's, uh, do not, uh, please do not understand and do not see this definition of the platform as something like an office or uh, something like a body. They will be like it's, meetings, it's, it's like a regular vivid, meetings. It's vivid, a vivid cooperation <coughs> between, first of all, military, military to military, because uh, the most important is to have intelligence, information, 
and uh, for example new absolutely new features electronic warfare cyber what to do with that how to cope and we have a huge experience which are re we are ready to share with our partners from NATO and it's it's valuable so about the upcoming uh, Warsaw summit uh, uh, of NATO what decisions regarding Ukraine we should expect well uh, we expect, and of course it is, uh, it is known, that first of all, uh, the, the very fact of conducting NATO-Ukraine Commission meeting at the highest level is a very strong signal that NATO is continue to be with Ukraine. Secondly, we will have uh, what we expect, political declaration supporting uh, the territorial integrity of Ukraine, uh, including Crimea. Uh, supporting uh, in the unavailability of borders of Ukraine and <coughs> all other prospects of cooperation which could be reconfirmed politically. And the third point that uh, NATO at the level of heads of states and governments would endorse the program comprehensive assistance package for Ukraine. So what will it include, this assistance well, package? It would include uh, of course, this is the main question, and uh, <coughs> the thing is that uh, why we are so interested in uh, getting this, uh, this package, because it fully uh, corresponds to our plans and expectations according to the newly adopted uh, strategic bulletin, which would lead us to the transformation of the armed forces and security sector of Ukraine according to NATO standards. So NATO's assistance is a crucial because what we are trying to do, what we will do, will be uh, combined with some, well, pillars or pinpoints from NATO. This is the substance. And what is the difference? Uh, if we talk about uh, uh, the future and uh, our expectations, uh, now we have a absolutely uh, clear picture about uh, reformation and transformation process. We know how to do it, we know what we need, we know what kind of assistance we can uh, expect from NATO. Any practical assistance? Including practical, but for uh, example, again, uh, for example, for example, training, Yavorev. Uh, I don't know whether you had an opportunity to be there. Uh, now we are continue with the assistance of our uh, partners, allies from the United States, Canada, Lithuania, and uh, 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 the Great Britain, train our forces, and the aim is to achieve the capability for Ukraine to train ourselves. So we train trainers at the same time. This is uh, the pra very practical, uh, not exercise, but uh, transformation process from down to top. We started from forces, from people, from soldiers, how to train them, what to do on the battlefield, how to save life, how to uh, fight with enemies and how to protect your friends and colleagues. So is there any, any progress in negotiating with the uh, member states of NATO in regard of uh, lethal weapons that could be provided to the Ukrainian army? There is no process of negotiations on arms supplies to Ukraine with NATO. It's only about each country. Each country, but bilateral talks. So it is not excluded, it is still in the pipeline, but what is essential that we have a, a necessity and the opportunity to robust Ukrainian uh, industry. We can produce it ourselves, we have to do it ourselves. We need technologies, not weapons. Maybe, of course, we need uh, everything what is needed on the battlefield, but to be self-sufficient, uh, we have to talk about uh, technologies and production.
uh, on Ukrainian facilities on uh, of uh, high tech systems, which, as we learned uh, from hybrid warfare, which is needed now. So this issue is uh, is fully provided uh, by the uh, strategic defense bulletin of uh, 2016. So the deepening of cooperation with NATO and, and adopting the, the standards of NATO. Well, mm, you know, uh, of course, uh, it is provided. Of course, we uh, continue to implement NATO standards. But uh, again, let me stress this very important point. The thing is that we uh, are ready not only to consume any kind of assistance and cooperation, but to deliver. Because Ukrainian uh, in industrial complex is still very, uh, very powerful. We can produce. We still continue to be one uh, of the leading nations in terms of uh, export of arms and uh, uh, double use technologies. So we just need to adjust our industry to our needs. And not only to our needs, but also we are ready to cooperate with our uh, partners from NATO countries. And just uh, the last question about the, the same bulletin. Uh, the, its deadline is 20, 20, 2020. So uh, how is it possible to, to uh, implement all those provisions that are envisaged by, the, uh, by this bulletin? Cooperation and uh, work together with NATO allies and uh, with our internal agencies that visit, uh, uh, would it be feasible or not? And of course, we would not uh, propose to uh, the government and president the program which is not acceptable, which is not feasible. Of course, we believe that it is feasible and we do not only believe, but we have some calculations. Being the top of priorities now for, for Ukraine, defense reform. We expect that government would uh, reply to our request and uh, act accordingly. There is no other way, unfortunately. We have to not only to stop the aggression, we have to uh, re-establish uh, national sovereignty over all the territory of Ukraine. And to do so, we need to have a very strong army. Because, uh, unfortunately, the lesson we learned that there is no other means to oppose the force. The only one thing, you have to be very strong. Uh, thank you for finding time to join us today. Thank you. Igor Dolohov, uh, Ukraine's Deputy Minister of Defense for European Integration, joined Ukraine today. Thank you for watching us. See you soon.